let's have our closing conversation of the day, going out with Mr. Chris Daughtry. Uh, just explain in terms of you know the Daughtry machine, where you guys are at, right now, coming off the tour. The Daughtry machine, I've never heard it called that. Um, we, we, yeah, we spent uh, like, I think six or seven months on the road this year. Um, US, Asia, um, South Africa, uh, we're all over the place. It was, it was an incredible year, and we're just now Took a break right before the holidays. So now we're gearing up to try to figure out what's next. Well, that's the thing. In 2019, I would imagine, and what an artist has in terms of career choices, probably a lot different than way back in and your idol breakthrough. That was how many years ago now? 12, I think. Yeah. Imagine, well, uh, does it feel like a very different music business? Extremely different. Um, uh, I, I got in in 2006 when like people still bought real records. <laughs> and then uh, we, we've seen like so much change over the past few years with uh, all the streaming services and you know, Spotify, Pandora, all of it, yeah. So back in 06, you, you finished fourth on Idol. You were a very memorable contestant. You kind of broke out from there. How many albums over that? We, we just put out our fifth album in July. Wow. So yeah. it's about fifth so album. fifth album and a great set, so technically six, yeah. Amazing. Most artists never even get to the point where they reach a greatest hits. Um, so you're doing, so you're now you're at a place where you're asking yourself questions about what's next. Obviously you can't spill all the beans, but like, what are some of the questions that are going through your mind right now as you figure out what you want to be doing in 2019? Exactly that. Like, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> um, yeah, just go back and do No, I think, I, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we, we, we released one single off this record and, and we're about to release our second one, so that could potentially put us back out on the road um, for a few months. Um, but yeah, I'm already kind of forward thinking, already writing new stuff. Um, and I feel like you have to be that way these days. You have to be, um, okay, we put that out, now on to the next thing. Um, because people are, are always looking for that next product that you put out, and um, especially with with things like Spotify, and there's so many artists that, that have so much access to people now, um, and have so many ways of getting exposure that it's almost like it's they heard it, and now they can't wait for the next thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it feels just, like you have to. It, it puts a lot of pressure on you to, to continuously be creative. Yeah, I mean, it seems like artists nowadays are releasing at a rate that it was unthinkable back from when I was a kid. You know, does that put a lot of stress on you and your people to to meet that demand? I think I, I put a lot of stress on me. Um, it's your fault. Yeah, it's my. It's all my fault. I have to look at it that way, or else I'll, I'll, I'll go insane. But um, yeah, I think uh, I'm always going. Man, what am I going to write about next? Um, it, it, but I, I don't, I'm actually in a place where I don't feel like I've done my best work yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, whenever that is. Um, I feel like there's some stuff brewing right now that I'm like, okay, I can see where this might go. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I put a lot of pressure on me. And I feel like, because of that, I feel like everybody around me is thinking the same thing, mm -hmm. going, what's he going to come out with something else? Or, or, or it better be good, or it's gotta be this, it's gotta be that. Which is all stuff that I'm telling myself that people are saying. Meanwhile, nobody's even thinking about us, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but as far as like management and label and things like that, I'm always thinking that there's that, there's that pressure. And so it sounds like you've got some ideas about where you're headed next artistically. Does the management and label, do they come in as well and say, well, if you look at the trends out there, here's how things are hitting, or do you just operate purely from gut, from the heart? I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, there's always that, um, there's always that, you know, you're, you're aware, there's always that awareness of what's going on out there and, and, and how you kind of um, fit into that, if at all. And then there's the, I just want to write from the gut or from the heart, you know, and, and if there's a way to bridge those two together, then that's fantastic, but and and even going into a record, you you hope for a hit, you pray for a hit. It, you never know if that's ever going to happen. Um, and so, at the end of the day, you have to be proud of it, you have to be excited about it, and you have to believe in it, 
or else no one else will. You draw a contrast between the early part of your career, kind of more album-centric time than today, the yeah. Spotify world. So how has that changed your mentality as an artist? Did you, you know, think more in terms of albums, now more in singles? What's that like? I think it's exactly that. I, it, it, for the first time in our career, I'm, I'm thinking, do we even have to do an album anymore? Do we, hey, I'm really excited about this song I just wrote. Why not just record it and put it out? We were actually, me and my manager were talking about that earlier. Um, I think we live in that, that age where you're, it's okay to do that. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think, it, I think it's exciting because a lot of times uh, we'll write songs and by the time we put the record out, those songs are like two or three years old and we're already over them. But it's the first time <laughs> the public is hearing it or the fans and, and then we're like, yeah, but we're already working on new stuff. Whereas if we just go, hey, we're excited about the song, here it is. I think there's something really cool about that. And with regard to Spotify, you know, there's been controversy, debate about the economics for RV. I mean, where do you stand on that? Do you feel that you're getting your fair share? No. <laughs> uh, but, but, I, but I think that the cool thing about it is you're getting, there's so much, like there's what, uh, I don't know, like a couple million artists on Spotify. Yeah. I don't remember ever knowing of a couple million artists ever when I was listening to the radio back as a kid, you know. I don't know if there was ever that many artists to be heard. Now, it, it, people can get their music out like bam, 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 bam. And, it, and, it, and on one hand, it's like, how do you navigate that? How do I even find you know, good stuff to listen to? Or, or you just have to you know, dig through the bundle or whatever. But, um, but on the other hand, it, it feels like you can easily get lost in the pile and, and slip through the cracks too. So there's a, there's a big responsibility on you to you know, super serve the fan base via social media and, and get the word out there that you even have stuff to listen to. And Unless you're in those, like, you know, those upper echelon, top tier artists that, you know, like the Post Malones of the world that, you know, does a billion streams, which is fantastic. You deserve it. I think it's excellent. So in the decade plus that you've been doing this, have you seen the economics of you? change in terms of, well, in the beginning, uh, we got to get those album sales, and now maybe things like merch and touring? Or Absolutely. Now, now it's, it's, you have to tour, which we've always been a touring band. Um, that's always been uh, our go-to way of, of making money, that and merch. And now it's definitely, you know, more than ever, that's what we rely on because, you know, bands like us, that, that, you know, just being honest, bands like us that, that there's not a lot of uh, room in the in the, the pop radio format for guitars, so you you rely on the road, you rely on that fan base that, that keeps coming back to see you, and, and they've been super loyal, and, and we've been fortunate enough to be able to still play big rooms and, and sell out arenas in South Africa and all over the world. So it's it's a it's a fun it's a it, it's definitely more work than just sitting back and watching the, the checks roll in from radio play, but. You know, I got into this to be, you know, a stage performer, and I have to always remind myself that I get to do that and still make a living. I mean, my guess is also when you first broke in 06, social media wasn't maybe as much a factor or at all. I think MySpace was, was still a thing. <laughs> um, I didn't even, I didn't, we had my, my, my first band, or second band, rather, they had a MySpace page, and I don't, I don't even think I remember how to log into it. But, um, <laughs> And I, I wasn't forward thinking enough at the time to realize that that is the future and that's where everything's going to be headed. But, um, but what, you know, what's your strategy out there? I mean, you're you're on Instagram, Twitter, and whatnot. How 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 do you? Think? Man, that's a, I, you know we I feel like we could be doing more. I feel like we we just you know we actually do um, we stream we live stream from our shows like uh, the the all the fans in the fan club they get to see the live show live show about. 10, 15 minutes of each show, but we'll go from like the drum riser, or we'll go from like the guitar world, you know, we'll hit different angles of the show, so they're seeing it from different perspectives, which has been very successful, and, and uh, they, they seem to really love that a lot. And we'll do live streams, like headed to a stage, you know, giving them more access to the, 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 the boredom of <laughs> that stage, because it's not what people would expect. We're like, hey, we're backstage, it looks just like this room, and, Every other room, <laughs> it's just got bananas and apples and all this stuff. But um, but yeah, we we try to give them as much access as possible. Um, 
Uh, we've done you know some some live streams here and there on Facebook and things like that. But I feel like uh, as I'm saying this, I'm like, man, there's a lot more we could be doing because I think as the the technology becomes available or, or as those formats become available, the expectations get higher and higher, and then you have to like get yourself out of that comfort zone of where you were and go, okay, now I need to do more because more is expected. Well, so what is what could more look like for you? Is it more, you know, backstage? Is it like what, what else? What what can you do? I think the one on one, like the for me, I, I one of the things that I realize I need to be replying to comments more. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm in the mood to reply to comments. I need to be doing that to every post. You know, and it becomes because I I got into it when there was like zero access to the fans other than at the shows or after the shows or meet and greets or whatever. And then it, overnight, it was like, oh, by the way, you can talk to your fans now. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Does it change your relationship with them? Is it good? Is it bad? Yeah, no, it, it act absolutely does. I feel like the past couple years, they've actually gotten to know me more than they ever did on the radio or on television or anything because I've allowed access to that. And just hanging out after the shows and just having you know, shoot the shit kind of conversations and, and just talk about life. And, it, and all of a sudden, the, the guard is let down and it's, it's uh, you're actually just having a conversation with people. And there's this feeling of connection there. They get to know you. Do you feel you get to know them? There's a few of them that we've gotten to know quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the good way. Uh, no, no, we, 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 there's, there's, a, there's quite a few of them that, that we, we see on a regular basis and we're extremely grateful. And uh, we've gotten to know their kids. We've seen kids grow up mm -hmm. and that, that are, that are uh, you know, probably initially forced to come to a doctor show, but now they're actual fans. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a different time we live in and, and it's exciting. And, and uh, I think the, the days of the mystery are just over. Yeah. So we're here at CES. I mean, are you a techie or device guy? Are you doing I'm someone who loves seeing new, new technology. Like I'm always like a gadgets kind of guy. However, I haven't, I haven't uh, updated my phone in a couple, couple uh, models, but yeah, I'm, I'm always, uh, I'm always enthralled by that. And, and lastly, I'm just curious, you know, with the demands of the business and how they've changed over the course of your career, you know, is it something that you take in stride or is it, you know, I just want to be an artist this or I'm just curious to get a sense of how you deal with, you know, it's tough being a business for anybody. Yeah, I think you just go with it. I think you, um, you go, okay, now what do we do? Uh, if this is this way now, now what do we do? And um, it's really easy to keep doing the same thing over and over and wonder why things are changing around you. But I mean, the, the simple fact is everything changes all the time. So um, we live in a day and age where technology is changing overnight, you know, at a very rapid rate. So we also have to be willing to change equally as fast. So like today we went into a self-driving lift. I was really bummed out that there was someone in the driver's seat. <laughs> really, she didn't be I got cheated. I was expecting a Jetsons type experience, and um, I saw his hands on the wheel way too much. So, I was, uh, so I'm, I'm excited about like the new stuff that's to come and, and new ways of doing things. Um, but it is easy to kind of you, you get yourself in a mindset to go, oh, back in the day, you know, when we did this, we did that. But the fact is that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I'm sure here in CBS soon, most cars on the road will probably be uh, self-driving. Yeah. You're playing tonight here in Vegas. We are playing, yes. So come see him at, where are you? Where are we playing? Uh, Velasco, is that what it is? Something, where, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Is, awesome. that, is that open to the public? Yeah. No, it's a private event. It's a private event. Well, stand outside <laughs> Sorry. and listen to the ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys, appreciate it.